What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. Today we're talking about the ILNP Under the Sea collection for late summer 2023. If you didn't know, they usually release two collections per season, one at the beginning of the season and then one kind of in the middle of the season. And each collection has six polishes each, so it ends up being 12 polishes per season. But if you haven't heard of ILNP at all, they are an independent nail polish brand. They're based in the US and all of their polishes are 10 free, meaning they are free of 10 of the potentially harmful ingredients that can be found in nail polish. They're vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients. And they're also cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. So like I said, we've got six new polishes for today. They're all really rich, vibrant sort of shades, which feel perfect for that sort of transition time between summer and fall. And we also have a lot of different finishes here. So let me go ahead and show you the swatches first. Then we can talk a little bit more about pricing, availability, my thoughts on the polishes, all that good stuff. So roll the swatch footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I'm using the Orly Bonder base coat. So we'll start off with the magnetic polish of the collection. This is called Sandbar and this is a really gorgeous medium beige light brown sort of jelly base that is absolutely packed with this super almost white magnetic silver glitter running throughout. And then we also have the tiniest little touch of hollow sparkle. And honestly, I did get perfect coverage in two coats if I wanted this to be just like a sheer jelly neutral manicure with a little bit of that hollow sparkle. And I loved the way that looked. But what I like to do for magnetic polishes is I will apply it for full coverage and then I'll put on an additional coat and magnetize it. And let me tell you, this color was just begging to be magnetized in the aura style. So that's what I decided to do first. Basically just wiggling the magnet around my nail while the polish is still wet and it creates this really gorgeous velvety sort of effect on the nails. And I think it looked absolutely stunning this way. It gives such a beautiful sunlit look. It really does remind me of sand, but it's also definitely very soft and velvety looking. But I also wanted to try it in the regular cat eye style. And I will say looking at the polish in the bottle, I didn't expect to like the way that it would look magnetized in the cat eye style. I figured it would pretty much be super sheer all around my nail and then just that one little stripe of magnetic color, but I ended up actually really liking it. And I still feel like my visible nail line was covered enough. Like you could still see a tiny bit of it, but there was just like a softened touch to it. And I thought that base color looked really gorgeous. So I actually surprised myself liking this one magnetizing the cat eye. Next up, we have the shade Ariel. I'm going to be totally honest. <laughs> I've never seen the Little Mermaid and I do not know anybody in real life with that name. So I'm not a hundred percent sure how to pronounce it. I've looked it up a bunch of times and I feel like my mouth just is not used to how I say it. So we're just gonna gloss right over that and move on to the polish description. This is a really gorgeous, vibrant red jelly and it is packed with iridescent flakies. So it's basically this really juicy cherry red sort of base color. And then the iridescent in there mostly shifts from red into orange into yellow, but at extreme angles, you can definitely see a little bit more pink into purple into even blue. So it is absolutely stunning, gave me perfect coverage in two coats. Moving on, we have the shade Hidden Treasure. And let me tell you, my camera did not do this one justice. It is this absolutely stunning purple jelly base. It definitely leans a little bit on the cooler side, but it's warmed up by this gorgeous golden flaky running throughout. And then we also have a hollow sparkle running throughout. And I cannot get enough of this polish. I think it is so beautiful. It really looks like a deeper purple, but then when the light hits it, you see this golden color coming through and it is absolutely stunning. Again, it gave me perfect coverage in two coats, but I still feel like there was maybe the tiniest hint of nail line. So if you prefer a more opaque look, you can do a third. Next up, we have the shade Sea Glass. This is another absolute flaky bomb of a polish. And this time we've got a cobalt blue base color and it is just packed with these flakies that primarily look blue, but at certain angles, you can see a little bit more of a turquoise into like a deeper blue into indigo and then even into purple at more extreme angles. And I believe there's also a little hint of hollow sparkle in here as well. And I have to say in person, I thought this looked perfect in two coats. Looking at it on camera now, I do wish I had done a third just because I think that the color would have been a little bit more vibrant in a third coat, but I still like the way that it looks in two. Next up, we have the shade Blowing Bubbles. This is another blue, but this time we are looking in the lighter, almost turquoise kind of sky blue shade. And 
and this one is a super holographic color and it has a pretty jelly-like base to it, but I do think it ends up giving full coverage in two coats, at least on my nail length. So I wouldn't classify this one as a jelly, but this is an absolute hollow bomb. There's so much going on in here. It's definitely a scattered hollow, so you don't get those lines of hollow like you would with a linear rainbow, but it really does look gorgeous. That hollow is so sparkly and bright and it ends up being so smooth, which you wouldn't expect from looking at it, but even without top coat, it felt very smooth to the touch and it's a really stunning color. I think looking at it a little bit closely, I'm also seeing a hint of like this almost white metallic shimmer running throughout and I think that just adds a little bit more brightness to the polish. And last but not least, we have the shade Paradise and this one is a gorgeous forest green and this actually had the same formula as Sea Glass. So it's basically just the green version of that. We've got this green jelly base and then it is packed with these green metallic flakies and we also have a subtle hollow sparkle in here. Now this one I did notice was a little bit more sparse when it came to the flakies. So it definitely had a more jelly-like consistency to it. So you can see in two coats, it definitely gave a strong jelly vibe and you could see my visible nail line through that. And you could also see some areas where there were less flakies. I ended up doing three coats and I think that it looked a lot better in three just because there wasn't any patchiness, but it still does have that sheer jelly-like sort of vibe. You can still see a touch of the visible nail line, but it's not very prominent. So here are all of the polishes together. And I have to say overall, I really enjoyed these. I do like the color story. I know it's definitely a little mermaid inspired and also just mermaidy in general. And I don't fully understand any references in particular, just because I've never seen the little mermaid, but I definitely see the color inspiration coming through. And I think just in general, like I said, I think these work really well for that transitional period between summer and fall, just because we have these shades that are really vibrant and gorgeous in the sunlight, but they're also richer tones. So they work really well for fall. And I really appreciate that we have a couple of nice pairings going on here. Like I think the blues look nice together. I think we also have the flaky shades work well together. And for some reason, the purple and the green together are really speaking to me. I don't know why, but it's, it's just a pretty look. So yeah, let's talk a little bit more about it. So those are the polishes and overall, I really loved them, especially those really flaky packed polishes. I honestly don't think my camera did these justice, but really all of them were so good. I love the color story. I love the theme. Usually I'm a little bit pickier when it comes to ILNP's collections where they have different finishes and different colors throughout the collection rather than when they do the more uniform collections. But in this case, I actually really ended up enjoying it. And I think that the colors are very cohesive together. And I think there's also a lot of mix and match opportunities here. So yeah, definitely appreciated that. Really appreciated the colors. And of course, the formulas as always were amazing. So all of these polishes come in 12 milliliter bottles. They do have a soft touch cap and they also have what I like to call a medium wide flat brush. It's not too wide, but it's also not too thin. And it does have a straight edge across the top. And all of them retail for $10 USD on the ILNP website. But as of the posting of this video, they are currently available for $9 USD each. I've mentioned this a few times in ILNP reviews, but usually when they first release a collection, they are available at a slight discount. So I always try to get my reviews out a little bit on the early side so you can grab them at the discounted rate. But yeah, definitely highly recommend grabbing them ASAP if you're interested because you do get a dollar off. So I will link that all down below. You can check them out if you are interested, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What do you think of these polishes? Which color is your favorite? And what do you think of the theme? Leave it all in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm also in the middle of moving. So if you want to check out some moving vlogs, I have that over on my vlog channel, which I'll link up in the cards. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon, my Royal Astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my Cosmic Admirals, Rocky Man's daughter, Paula, Ken, and Rosie. I really appreciate your support and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. For today's fun fact, I have a would you rather and it's themed based on the collection. I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget it. It was, would you rather be able to fly or be able to breathe underwater? This is something I think about this more than the average person does, I'm pretty sure. Because I am always thinking like, would I like to be able to fly? I feel like it would be so much easier. You don't have to worry about traffic. You can just fly wherever you need to go. And also in this hypothetical situation, it's not like a crazy weird thing that you can fly or breathe underwater. So you don't have like a 
lot of media attention. Don't worry. It's just for ease of life. But on the other hand, I want to be able to breathe underwater because I very much feel connected to the ocean and I love the vibes. So I feel like I would pick breathing underwater over flying, even though the convenience of flying is pretty nice. I just don't see myself doing it that much, even though actually now that I'm thinking about it, I live in the desert now, so I'm nowhere near the ocean. So would there really be that much of a benefit to breathing underwater? Oh my gosh, do I have to change my answer? I don't know. I have to think about it more, but if anybody else has their thoughts on it, leave it in the comments. We can chat about it and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.